Hi, I'm Jennifer Evans with Periwinkle Art Studio in Lake Villa, Illinois, and I am so excited to be launching this line of stencils that are large format stencils with Stencil Girl products. And I just wanted to introduce you to the four initial designs and a little bit about what you can do with the stencils and why they were created. And I know that mixed media artists all over the place are just going to go nuts when they see what you can do with these stencils. So when I teach in my classes, I try to use things like stencils and masks to help along the design because a lot of the people that attend my classes don't necessarily do mixed media art, but they want to, within a specific time frame, create something recognizable. And my goal is to make everyone feel comfortable and not worry about things like line and composition and perspective and things like that. So I created a line of stencils that have these wider openings that allow you to either trace or let a background come through or collage into. And along with these stencils, they all come with a set of these chipboard pieces that you can also apply mixed media techniques to, collage into your design, or add elements that are kind of coming out of the composition and really make it your own. This canvas is in process using the plumeria stencil and as I was talking about before, the wider openings in the stencil allow you to do different things like layer in smaller textures for some nice visual contrast and this one also already has the chipboard shapes collaged into the canvas. I mentioned before about preserving a background using stencils to do that. When I'm in my studio, a lot of times I'll have a lot of extra paint that you just can't squeeze back into the tube. That's not practical. So I will actually create backgrounds by laying down the color and very interesting things happen that maybe you wouldn't intentionally do if you set out to paint that. So I always have these backgrounds sort of in process. And what you can do with these stencils is move them around to get colors, interesting colors that are happening that you wouldn't necessarily intend on. And then you can trace around those and use paint in the background to kind of blur out the unnecessary parts of the colors that you don't want. And you could repeat that stencil also. But that's just an idea of a preserving a background technique. So. I'm just going to demonstrate a real quick background that I really love to do, which kind of gives it some randomness. I've already put down some yellow acrylic ink, and I'm going to layer over a darker yellow and also a teal, just quickly to put some color down. You can really do this with any color, but the trick is it has to be wet. It's got to be a wet ink. And then I'm taking some alcohol, rubbing alcohol, and I'm dripping it over the wet ink and it's just kind of kind of do its thing very random but that would be another way to put down an interesting texture in the background and then once it's dry you could come and decide where your stencil is going to go this is a project that was created with the leaves and berries stencil and as you can see it already has the chipboard leaves and berries collaged in. But don't let that limit your design. You don't have to place the chipboard pieces where they fit within the stencil. You can have extras and move them around or use this to trace your own set of leaves out of your own stencil paper or papers that you create or scrap of paper and move them around as if maybe the wind took this leaf and it's kind of flying off. So I hope you have as much fun playing with these stencils as I had designing them and I can't wait to see what you all create.